Okay, good afternoon. And I'm going to discuss a topic for the final term, which is the train package to or the comprehensive income tax and incentive reform and acceleration. So in, in your LM, uh, in your LMS, there there is a train a two part of a train package, which is part of your learning material since uh this is a timely and relevant because we already um, the, the, we already implemented the government already implemented the tax reform, which is the package one and the package two, and I'm going to discuss here about the draft of the presentation of the Undersecretary of Finance, uh, based uh, in their proposal of the package two, the package two of. Uh, the reform, which is the comprehensive income tax and incentive for the business. Okay, it talks about the corporate income tax. So what will be the learning objective of this topic today? So we're going to discuss the solutions or the reasons why do we need to have the tax reform by the Duterte administration and to present the benefits which the Undersecretary of Finance discussed at uh, illustrates about the benefits of having a tax reform and what are the reasons about uh, tax reform. Reducing the tax rates is part of the fiscal policy of the government. What, that's why fiscal policy and the taxation are connected, although fiscal policy is a separate topic in deep, uh, in other disciplines, but if we connect the fiscal policy in when it comes to tax, it talks about the government spending. Okay, it talks about a government spending wherein uh, to create a, a project, the, uh, the government should create a project to improve our economy. And how does the government can make a project or can improve our economy when it comes to spending? The, so the funds that came from it is through the taxes because the tax is the, the lifeblood of the government in order, to, uh, in order to pursue a lot of projects to improve our, economic, uh, our economy or the living of each and every people, okay? So, what we have right now in the Duterte administration is they they used to uh, they used to be, uh, make our tax reform by reducing the tax rates the tax rate that we have recently or previously in the previous administration. What is the reason uh, President Duterte is going to uh, is going to make uh, is going to make a reform when it comes to tax taxes because we all know that the tax rate in our country in the Philippines if you compare to Southeast Asian countries that our tax rate is very high and the reason the people are not spending enough money because of the taxes that that leads to a higher prices and also increase the inflation rate that devalue our currency. Okay? okay, here. So as you can see, this is the material that I uploaded in your LMS, okay, as the introduction to the comprehensive income tax and, and incentive reform by the, uh, of course, sorry, by Carl Kranichua, the Undersecretary of Finance. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, the property reduction in our country is very encouraging. As you can see in the graph from 2009 up to 2015, that, okay, that the poverty rate is decreasing, meaning the, uh, the, the economic living of every Filipinos are improving. Okay, meaning uh, they have income. Many people, uh, most of the people have their jobs. They spend. Uh, they have their incomes. 
they 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 spend their income in to sustain the personal needs or the resources that they need that, that they need to satisfy okay and as you go on from 2015 up to 2018 that the poverty rate is also increasing uh, decreasing rather because uh, in 2016 when president duterte become the president of our country part of his plan is to make a reform which is implemented in 2018 since he proposed the tax reform and it will be put in the 27 in 2017 they make a conduct an analysis and uh, and it, and uh, what they call this the the tax reform it should be implemented in 2018 and the first package of the tax reform acceleration is the, the what they call this the compensation income and which is already successful that that because through the tax rate and new uh tax tax scale or tax equivalent that the incomes of the individuals are improving and increase their spending because uh it will be not uh, to reduce the burden from paying a higher taxes that's why the, uh, they lessen the tax they lessen the tax rate so they can increase the spending of the consumers and not only the consumers even the, the government as well in what way since the, uh, president duterte is implementing expansionary fiscal policy wherein um, they have to increase the government spending by reducing the taxes so they can pursue the projects to improve uh, to improve funds. The president can pursue their projects to improve our economy. And one of the, the projects of this reform is the Build Build Bid program, the universal health uh, the, the universal health law, and even for education, for the free education for all. Okay, so first is the build 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 program. So the build 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 program is talk. It talks about infrastructure spending when we have that tax reform or reducing the tax rates tax rates in the, in our country. So as you can see, in year two thousand up to year twenty eighteen, this is the nominal values which the the infrastructures the infrastructure spending is increasing. As you can see in year two thousand. The year 2002, this was the Estrada administration that the spending, uh, the infrastructure was not really, it's a fair. Well, anyway, jo Joseph Estrada have only a short term uh, for, uh, for the political issues that time. And when Gloria Macapagal Arroyo from 2002 up to 2010, as you can see, there are improvement in infrastructures, but the, that those projects of the administra uh, administration was not yet finished and it was continued by successors. But as you can see from 2002 to 2010, that the infrastructure sp spending has been improving and increasing, increasing to create employment to each and every people who doesn't have jobs that will lead to poverty. And from 2010 up to 2016, this was the Aquino administration. But as you can see in 2010 and 2012, uh, the, the, the infrastructure spending had been decreasing because we experienced uh, technicalities or issues that time about the, the issues of the president, but President Aquino, but he improves the economy about the infrastructure, he continues the, the unfinished project of our, uh, Gloria Macapagal Arroyo in order to increase the spending, to create employment, and we call this to improve the living of the economic, the economy of our country. And the current president also, as Rodrigo Duterte, through the tax, through the tax reform, he wants to, uh, to increase the infrastructure spending, so to improve our transportation, our economy, and it will create employment to, to, to all Filipino people. So as you can see, so this will be the, the graph 
of the graph or the flow of the infrastructure spending from year 2000 to 2018 from the Estrada administration, Arroyo administration, Aquino, and Duterte. Okay, part of the part of the reform of uh, the current president is the rice liberalization rice liberalization reform. What do you mean rice liberalization reform? Uh, this kind of uh, or rice tarification, rice liberalization, we want to help. The goal of the government is to help the farmers to produce a lot of rice and to decrease the importation of rice. Because as you can see, our country is incapable of producing a, to, a, to, a, 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 ton, a required rice production in a year. That's why the government is also doing importation to sustain the needs or the consumption or the demand for the rice. But in this, re in this uh, reform, the farmers are encouraged to produce a lot of rice to lower the prices of rice for the consumers. And it is a win-win solution wherein the consumers, the demand for rice will not, uh, will the price, the demand for rice will be increasing, but the price will also affordable and the producers of the rice will be improved or uh, will have their income or improving their income. So the rice liberalization can be a game changer because this is a pro-consumer and pro-farmer, even pro-taxpayer. So it, this is a win-win solution for the issue of the rice production and consumption. And it's, it's also a part of the reform of the Duterte administration as part of their tax reform. Because if we have the rice tarification, it will control the importation of the rice and to increase the production of rice as well that will help the farmers and producers. Okay? So we talk about inflation. Inflation is also a part of the reform because the reason why we need to reduce the tax rates and based on the rice tarification law signed by the, by the Duterte, Duterte administration in 2019, it will also improve to decline the inflation rate for our country. Inflation, it talks about the increasing the prices and decreasing the value of our money. But through the tarification, the inflation rate will be reduced and decreased so to, to improve or to strengthen the spending or the value of the money for spending for rice, spending on commodities, particularly the rice. Okay, part of the reform is the human capital development and it's also implemented right now because of the UHC or the universal healthcare that all the people have the access to what? To healthcare, regardless if you, if you have bill health or not, none, because it's part of the reform is the fund for the healthcare. That's why designed by the, the, the Duterte administration or signed by the president for the purpose of universal healthcare law it, it to reduce the what you call is to reduce the price of the primary care drugs, particularly the med, the maintenance for the diabetes, hypertension, and cholesterol. And health conditions, of course, that all of us has a discount when it comes to hospitalization. Okay, and nine, and, that, and there's a fixed fee that that even you don't have a pocket money, still you have the access to health care that for paying for the reducing the discount for a big discount of payment or a pre medicine at all. And part of the train law, okay, this is the package one, which is the personal income through this, through the, what they call this, through the, the train law, as you can see here, diba? as you can see here in the old tax system and the tax reform, if you talk about the annual gross income, which is the A and B, okay, it's both of the income on the old tax system and the train law. Well, if, if we talk about deductions in the old tax system, it's still with the net taxable income. But in the train law, the, the personal exemptions are, are none, but the deductibles are still, the uh, are still, um, that talks about the, the distribution, uh, 
contributions. So as you can see here, as you can see here, in the net tax in the old tax system, the tax due is twenty two thousand five ninety. But in the, the in the tax reform in the new bracket, the tax the tax due is zero for those. Who have the annual income of 250,000 from zero to 250,000 below, in excess to 250,000, of course there should be a tax rate, but it's but the tax rate is minimal. So you can see the difference. That's why and this train a personal in a reform for the personal income tax is enjoyed by enjoyed by the employees who has. Uh, a salary, a salary, a salary rate of twenty-four thousand or twenty-five thousand below, or shall we say twenty thousand below? Okay. So, meaning from those uh, wage earners who have to earn a salary or the wage of twenty thousand below or twenty-five thousand below, they benefit of not of zero taxes that they paid and the whole income. That they earn from their salary are uh, is that we call as savings and increase their spending and increase also their saving of money. Okay, under the tax reform, of course, part of the project or the, uh, the benefit of the tax reform is the social protection program. And what are those? The unconditional cash transfer, meaning if you're going to transfer cash or tax about remittances. There is no such any condition, or they 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 will pursue to a free charge of it. Part of it is for the jeepney drivers, the Pantawid Pasada program, which is also part of the tax reform that the, the drive, jeepney drivers are given an opportunity for uh, a pledge or what shall you say an uh, an amelioration that increase their income to their in their in their driving. And even the social welfare program through the national ID system, and this national ID system right now is a voluntary. It's not uh, mandatory yet, but it's a voluntary for those who want to avail that. They have uh, for those who want to avail that. We can avail the national ID. This this will be our identity and access to the social welfare, the part of the government. So what would be the economic priorities of the government in the next three years because of the tax reform? Of course, it, it, uh, first is to accelerate or to increase the build, build, build infrastructure program. Uh, for the next three years, it should be enhancing or strengthening the build, build, build until the President Duterte finish his term. And to pursue economic reforms to increase the, 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 the employment and the priority bills when it comes to Public Service Act, the Retail Trade Liberalization Act, and the Foreign Investment Act. And to improve the implementation of existing reforms, of course, the economic priorities of the government is the National ID Law, Doing Business Law, Universal Health Care Law, which is also implemented, and even the Rice Tarification Law. To improve the productivity of agriculture and distribution of the, to individual titles and the land reform beneficiaries, which is also implemented and given by the, the government to the farmers. And to pursue the remaining tax reform packages to make a tax system simpler, fairer, and more efficient. Okay. What are those remaining tax reform that, that they have to implement? This one. Okay. This will be the economic priorities of the government since they, they, they implement now the personal income tax reform. That's the package one and the package two is the corporate income tax and incentives reform. This is a business tax wherein to decrease the tax rates of a business tax or the corporate income tax and to increase their, and, and, and the incentive is to increase also their investments and to save investments, okay? And the, the package three, which is implemented soon, and even the package four, which is the property valuation and the passive income and financial taxes. So the goal of the tax reform is to invest for our country's future, so to improve 
the, 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 li the economic living or to improve the living of every Filipino people. That's why part of the project of the government is the Vision 2040. So what's the Vision 2040? To improve the, uh, the living of every Filipino people for the next 40 years that the Filipino people have fair income, they have all people, all the, uh, the, all the, uh, the Filipino families have their own house to reduce to reduce the urban poor, uh, to, yeah, to reduce it, to decrease the urban poor, and to create employment and to have a fair spending of, fair spending for the living. Okay, here are the myths, or what do you, what do you would call myths? When saying myth, Many people are not agreed to the uh, corporate income tax incentive reform acceleration. Why, uh, why people are not agreed with this? Because of their beliefs. That's why we explain that why, why the government is pursuing this package to package to reform. The first myth is that that. Many people believe that the corporate income tax incentive uh, reform acceleration is an anti-incentive. What do we anti-incentive? The business have no incentive for what? To increase their investments. Why? Because the registered business are paying the higher taxes based on the tax rates, but they, they don't have any benefit of investment. That's why many people or many business rather have that, 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 that does not declare a proper tax to the Bureau of Internal Revenue. But the, but the goal of the government to have this package to implementation is to promote, to promote a fair and accountable tax incentive system, meaning that every peso granted as tax incentive is a peso of the budget should spend from the infrastructure health, education, and social protection that benefit all and not only the few people can benefit from this project of the government, but also all. That's why this kind of reform is a performance base where all the registered business must be participated here to pay their taxes uh, uh, fair or the right amount of taxes. And the, the, the comprehensive income tax, the corporate income tax and incentive uh, reform acceleration is also have their target. What's the target of the, the, uh, the, the, of the comprehensive income tax reform? The target is to, of course, not only to increase the government spending, to increase also the investment of the business and spending of the consumers. Once we, we reach the target, that was the time that we have to contract the the government spending or the fiscal policy. Time bound. There should be a period of time on when this reform must be implemented because if, 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 if this reform uh, help to improve our economy, we would also get back to our tax rate, the latter. And this reform should be transparent. We say transparent, it should be fair and should be implemented to all taxpayers, particularly the corporate taxpayers or the business taxpayers. It's, uh, all people should pay, should pay their taxes fairly, not, own, uh, not few, but all. As you can see in 2017, that's why they want to implement that the, the tax reform, there is a foregone revenue in 2017 from the tax incentive. And many of that those foregone revenue are unnecessary incentives. First, in 2017, 9, 989, 166 registered firms, most of which pay the regular tax rate, which is the 30%. Okay? That's why they may have the reform. And in 2017, over 441 billion pesos, or 2.8 of the gross domestic product, was granted to 3,100. 50 firms. That's why almost all the 90,000 small medium enterprises pay the regular 30% rate, as you can see. Going back to our take, take note, it should be transparent. And through the old tax system, it's not transparent. And in addition to 63 billion pesos or 0.4% of the gross domestic product was lost 
due to abuse of transfer pricing. That's why peers with incentive pay between 6% and 30% effective tax. That's why we have to, re to make a reform on the comprehensive income tax. Okay, so this will be, okay, this will be the matrix of the, the, of the comprehensive income tax incentives rep, uh, reform acceleration that can offer more competitive incentives, okay? So these are the categories. This will be the proposal of the comprehensive income tax incentive reform acceleration or under the status quo, which is the old tax system, the direct, the direct labor expense are both 150% deduction from the income tax. The training expenses in the in the in the status quo is 150,000, but under the comprehensive income tax reform, it should be 200,000 deduction. The domestic domestic inputs purchase from 100, it will increase to 150 percent. The uh, the research and development cost from 100 to 200,000 uh, at 200 percent deduction. The power expense from 100 to 150. While the depreciation allowance in the status quo has no deduction, but in the under the comprehensive income tax, there is a 10% deduction for the buildings and 20% for machinery. The reinvestment allowance for manufacturing under the status quo we don't have, but up to 50% reinvested profit within five years from the time of invest, reinvestment under the comprehensive income tax. There should be a reinvestment profit. And it can be carried over for the next three years while the, while the comprehensive tax reform under the net operating loss carry over during the first three years carried over the next five years. So, okay. So the, the, feder, uh, the federal, in, uh, sorry, the Fiscal Incentive Re uh, Regulatory Board or the FIRB, the Philippine Fiscal Fiscal Incentive Revenue Board follow the, follows the model follows the model of the country Malaysia when it comes to tax incentive administration. Oh, that's why Philippines, they want to adopt the, the model of the tax administration or tax incentive administration of Malaysia. As you can see, okay, here, who are in charge for the Fiscal Incentives Review Board? This one, the in our Philippines, the Department of Finance, the DTI, the Department of Trading Industry, the, the, uh, the Department of Budget and Management, the NEDA, or the, the National Economic Development Authority, and Office of the President. The Technical Committee is the Department of Finance, the DTI, DBM, the NEDA, the Office of the President, BIR, and the Bureau of Customs. And the Secretariat is the NTRC. The, the head is the Department of Finance under Secretary. Okay? So that's why they, uh, the, our Philippine government, they want to follow the, the, the model when it comes to tax incentive administration of Malaysia. Okay? Another, I uh, was well, sorry. So another myth is the comprehensive income tax will make the Philippines uncompetitive. That's that's what the belief of every Filipinos who uh, who uh, who don't believe about the tax reform. But as you can see, this is the reason why the current administration implements what they call uh, implements the or implement the reform. As you can see, in the Southeast Asian countries. Only our country, the Philippines, has the highest tax rate of 30%, while the Singapore has 17% of the, the comparative corporate income tax rate. Okay? As you can see, China and Indonesia have seen tax rate, but we are in the Southeast Asian country as 30%, which is the, the, sorry, the corporate businesses are it's very heavy or hard to pay the taxes, although it's a mandatory, but it will not save or investment to because of the higher tax rate. That's why our current administration make a reform 
to reduce the tax rates. So to increase the spending, not only the government, but even the consumers as well. Through the comprehensive income tax, uh, through the corporate income tax incentive reform acceleration, this will be the, the graph or the plan of the government in 2019, which is last year, from 30% up to year 2020 to reduce the tax rates. This is the plan of the government. Even though President Duterte will finish his term at in year 2022, for uh, the, the successor, his successor will continue this kind of reform. By 2029, the country is expecting that the tax rate should be increased to 20%. It's total reduction of the tax rate. And what do you, and, and this decreasing of the, ta the tax rates is the incentive, tax incentive. Why? Because through the, the, through the minimal, not really minimal, to the decreasing of the tax rate, it can increase the investment and it can increase the profit of the business. Okay? So the, in so the incentive system is being improved or to assure or to innovate when it comes to research and development, to innovate products and services, to improve the, the position of the, our country in global value chains, and to participate in more high value activities. That's why the government is now implementing the tax reform. And this, and I believe this, this is, uh, I believe it is already implemented. That's why they have to improve the conditions of all business and the Filipino people. And I believe it is already improved. Okay, for the skilled and hardworking talent, they have a manpower pooling for the, to update the skills of the, the, the people. That's why they have, that's why the government is have investing in K-12 programs. Even in TESDA, okay, even in TESDA and university healthcare. And for the build, build, build program of the, of the current administration for the ambitious infrastructure development, such as the, uh, the transportation, the export, the trades, and the business operations, Okay, the, the government has to invest $8 trillion on the Build, Build, Build program. And, to, and also to increase the profit of the small medium enterprise community and deserves treated fairly through the easier doing business is the solution is the, the EODB or the Executive Development, uh, uh, Executive uh, Development of Budget. So this will be the corporate income tax rate reduction in the biggest incentive in the businesses. As you can see, this will be amending of the law when it comes to tax codes. This is the proposed House Bill number 4157, and this is the Senate Bill 1357. So we're going to discuss it one by one. In the Section 5, or Section 27A, both of the House Bill and Senate Bill has the one percentage point every year reduction or the comprehensive income tax. In the section six, the House bill and the Senate bill also the same because they, they collaborate and reviewed and they have they approved this kind of amendments when it comes to tax law and the, and the tax rates. But in the House bill or in section five, the conditions of the comprehensive income tax reduction in the House bill, if savings are realized, then advance in the next decrease. But in the Senate bill, no condition for year 2020 to 2024. If the, if the tax report expresses deficit and it will be breached, then we should cut the spending. In the section six, if the patient deficit is breached in the House bill, then the, they have to postpone the next decrease of the tax rate. But in the Senate bill, with the condition of for 2025 to 2029, if the deficit is breached, we say deficit lack uh, is still the spending is lack. There's lackness of spending due to the taxes, tax rates. Then they, they will postpone the next decrease of the tax rate. In section, sorry. In section 10, 
the sunset period for income tax holiday availers or the ITH in the House bill, they allowed the income tax holiday availers that will expire on the schedule with the maximum of five years. But in the Senate bill or SB or the Senate bill allowed the income tax holiday to expire on the schedule. That's the difference. In Section 311B, the sunset for unfinished income tax holiday availers with succeeding gross income earned for the House bill, there's no such any amendment. But in the Senate bill, they allow the income tax holiday expired followed by the 5% of the GIE or the gross, gross income and expense with the minimum of five years. In the Section 10, the sunset period for, for forever Gross, in, gross income and expense tax in years. In house bill, it's more than 10 years, two years, five to 10, and 10 years, three years, and less than five years. But in the Senate bill, it's more than 10 years. It's just more than 10 years, the same, but less than five years. And the conditions of the Senate bill is for special seven years should be 100% exporter or 10,000 jobs or put loss sector. And in the Section 10, for the special tax rate during the sunset period of the gross income and expense, in the House bill, the gross income regime from year 2020 is 5%, and same with the Senate bill. In the Section 6, okay, the sunset of the ROHQ, the expiration is two years for the House bill, and same with the Senate bill. Okay, what about the availment of the period for incentives? For the House bill, it's for, the, for around NCR, it should be second, seven year for the tax incentives and the other areas in the Philippines, it should be 10 years. But in the Senate bill, it should five to eight years depending on the category and the category is based on the geographic and industry targeting where A is for the basic and B is for the enhanced, C is for the advanced. And the extension for the incentive, tax incentive for the Senate bill allowed for the total of 12 years for all incentives, okay? Another, in the House Bill 4157, relocating outside NCR, it should be three years. In the agribusiness, three years. And the poor disaster or conflict errors is three years. But for the Senate bill, none. Okay, for the House bill, Okay, the incentives package A for the house bill, it's not income regime, and uh, sorry, net income, but the, the, the Senate bill is the gross income regime. We get when you get the taxes. And the key provision in the section 10 for that special rate, okay, or for the fixed rate in the house bill from year 2020 and 2021 is 18%. 2022, 17, and 2030 is 13. And while in the Senate bill, from year 2020, it should be 8%, 2021, 9%, and year 2022 to 2030, that is 30%. So what is, what is the provision of this tax reform? In Section 10, uh, in lieu of local business tax for the House bill, but for the Senate bill, in lieu of taxes, from the national and local, okay? So in the package B performance base, oh, both of them are included when it comes to performance based incentive. Okay, for the additional deductions, oh, based on the tax reform from the section 10, from the house bill up to 50% from the labor, domestic input 50%, same with the Senate bill, but for the power, for House bill is 0%, but for the Senate is up to 50%. The investment for manufacturing, research and development and training, both of the House bill and Senate bill are 50% and both 100%. So what are the additional depreciation? Okay, from the House bill, for the building, both of it is 10%, while the for the equipment and machinery, it's, both of them are 20%. But and when it comes to net operating loss carryover, both of the House bill and Senate bill are three years loss carryover, five years. 
So what should be the power of the president to grant the additional incentives? In the House bill, which is made by the, the Congress, the president can approve special applications. But the conditions that the high priority sector or USD 20, uh, 20 million US dollars investment or 1,500 jobs must be created. But in the Senate bill, 1357, the president can approve special application maximum 40 years and the condition is the high priority sector of 1, million invest, 1 billion investment US dollars for 10,000 jobs. So this is the summary of the corp, uh, corporate income tax incentive reform and acceleration when it comes to the House bill and Senate bill. The reasonable sunset period. Okay, so this will be the reason why we have that kind of acceleration. Uh, I was sorry, a uh, reform for reducing the tax. So the reason or the majority of the investors see the important reason why do we need to investment in the Philippines? Aside from the, the tax reform, we encourage also the investors, the foreign investors to invest for our county in order to wider the gap between the total and approve uh, fiscal development, means more improvement. And the PESA approved interest had been declining even without package two. This is the reason why do we have the package two, as you can see, this is the red level. While the third one, the green one in 1.97, the board, of course, the board of investors or the board of investment approved investment are higher than the the PESA or the Philippine Economic Zone Authority suggesting that to invest. And in 2013, the PESA approved, approved course of the fiscal development were in, uh, consistently higher than the total of the FDI. So they, they suggest that many approve or they have to approve many reforms in order to see those graphs that the, 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 the cost of these reforms for our economy, okay? That's why we have, we encourage many in investors to invest in the Philippines. That's why uh, in, the, uh, in the current administration, in the previous administration, they go to the other country to encourage investors to invest for our country. So to improve our economic system and to implement the tax reform. And even the current president as well is also do that, okay? So as you can see in the news, in the business world, investment pledges hits the high record when it comes to the, when it comes to the conference in spite of the corporate income tax incentive Uh, comprehensive income tax incentive reform and acceleration. Okay, so the goal, or oh, this is the reason why, why is what is the goal of the current government when it comes to tax reform, the package two, is to have a comfortable life for all Filipinos. This, this is the long-term vision for the Philippines or the, the term which is ambition not in 2040. Okay, so th that would be our, the lecture for our, uh, the, uh, this will be the topic for our virtual class. As you can see, uh, the goal, uh, the reason, this, these are the key, key takeaways. First, the government is going to implement the tax reform for our country to increase the government spending to improve our economy by creating projects. And those projects when it comes to the education, the healthcare, infrastructures. And these three are the priority of the government to allocate budgets so they can improve uh, so to improve the life of the people. And even uh, to, to decrease our to reduce our inflation rate, to reduce also the unemployment rate and to increase the income and to increase the savings and investment of the business and the consumers. Through the 
the uh, another key takeaway that the president is doing expansionary fiscal policy wherein to increase the government spending by reducing tax rates. So it can circulate uh, to increase the spending of every people every people to sustain their ba the to sustain their basic needs okay and of course to improve another key take uh, the, the, the key takeaways is the bottom line is that there uh if we have the tax reform or reducing the tax rates it will implement for the next for uh, for the 40 years about the ambition in 2040 to improve the living of every Filipino or every Filipino family. And as you can see, when they implemented the personal income tax reform in 2019, uh, at first, employees did not feel about it, but as when the time goes by, especially it, uh, it's a one year of implement, implementing personal income tax, employees are enjoying this kind of reform because uh, they are uh, because of the reduced tax rates in their personal income at the same time they earn savings in their salary and wages but we are talking now the package two the question is that package two it can uh, that package two can still be implemented as of this moment yes it can be implemented to the corporate business but here is still in the in the stage of uh, polish, uh, polishing, so they can implement it to all the uh, corporate businesses and even the SMEs to be a to be a performance base, and there should be a targeted, a time bound or a target or a goal for this kind of tax reform when it comes to corporate income tax. Okay, so that will be our lecture for today. So again, thank you so much and good afternoon.